So I can write that as a dot a minus a dot b minus b dot a plus b dot b. Okay. So a dot a is length a squared. Let me jump ahead to the last term, b dot b is length b squared. And then these two terms, well, they're the same. You can check from the definition that a dot b or b dot a are the same thing. So there's no hidden trick here. This is really minus twice a dot b. Okay. So now let's compare these two formulas. Well, you see that this term is, I mean, this is the only difference between these two formulas for the length of c. So if you believe in the law of cosines, then it tells you that, yes, this is a proof that a dot b equals length a length b cosine theta. Or vice versa, if you've never seen the law of cosines, but you're willing to, you're willing to believe this, then this is the proof of the law of cosines. Okay, so the law of cosines of this interpretation are equivalent to each other. Okay, any questions? Yes? So in the second one, there isn't a cosine theta because I'm just expanding a dot product. Okay, so I'm just, you know, writing C equals A minus B, and then I'm expanding this algebraically, and then I get to an answer that has an A dot B. So then if I wanted to express that without a dot product, then I would have to introduce a cosine, and I would get the same as there. Okay? So, yeah, if you want the next step to recover the law of cosines would be to plug in this formula for a dot b, and then you would have a cosine. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so what is this good for? Now that we have a definition, we should figure out what we can do with it. So, what are the applications of dot product? Well, we'll discover new applications of dot product throughout the entire semester, but let me tell you at least about those that are readily visible. So, one is to compute lengths and angles, especially angles. So, let's do an example. Let's say that, for example, I have in space, I have a point P, which is at 1, 0, 0. I have a point Q, which is at 0, 1, 0. So it's at distance 1 here, 1 here. And I have a third point R at 0, 0, 2. So it's at height 2. And let's say that I'm curious and I'm wondering what is the angle. So here I have a triangle in space connecting P, Q, and R. And I'm wondering what is this angle here. Okay. So of course one solution is to build a model and then you know, go and measure the angle. But we can do better than that. We can just find the angle using dot product. So how would we do that? Well, so... If we look at this formula, we see, so let's say that we want to find the angle here. Well, let's look at the formula for PQ dot PR. Well, we said it should be length PQ times length PR times the cosine of the angle. Okay. Now, what do we know and what do we not know? Well, certainly at this point, we don't know the cosine of the angle. That's what we would like to find. But the lengths, certainly we can compute. We know how to find these lengths. And this dot product, we know how to compute because we have an easy formula here. Okay, so we can compute everything else and then find theta. So actually what we will do is we will find theta in this way. We'll take the dot product of PQ with PR 
and then we'll divide by the lengths. Okay, so let's see. So we said cosine theta is PQ dot PR over length PQ length PR. So let's try to figure out what is vector PQ. Well, to go from P to Q, I should go minus one unit along the x direction plus one unit along the y direction, and I'm not moving in the z direction. So to go from p to q, I have to move by minus one, one, zero. To go from p to r, I go minus one along the x-axis and plus two along the z-axis. So pr, I claim, is this. Okay? Then the lengths of these vectors, well, we take minus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared, square root, and then same thing with the other one. Okay? So the denominator will become, well, there's a square root of 2, and there's a square root of 5. What about the numerator? Well, so remember to do the dot product, we multiply this by this, and that by that, that by that, and we add minus 1 times minus 1 makes 1. Plus 1 times 0, that's 0. 0 times 2 is 0 again. So we will get 1 over square root of 10. Okay? That's the cosine of the angle. And of course, if we want the actual angle, well, we have to take a calculator, find the inverse cosine, and you'll find that it's about 71.5 degrees. Actually, we'll be using mostly radians, but for today, uh, I mean, that's certainly a more speaking answer. Than... Okay, any questions about that? No? Okay, so in particular, I should point out one thing that's really neat about the answer. See, I mean, we got this number. We don't really know what it means exactly, because it mixes together the length and the angle. 